Hi guys, what's going on? Reverb Stew here, back with another video. Uh, this is one's not Critical Ops, if you could tell by the video. Uh, or the game that's being played in the background. Actually, this is Age of Empires 2 HD. But it has nothing to do with what I want to talk about today. What I actually want to talk about today is YouTube. And it's a pretty common question that I see people asking, and they've actually been asked a couple times, so I figured I would uh, comment on it. So, for people who are new to YouTube, you're just starting your channel out, a really common question is, how do I grow my channel? How do I start my channel? How do I get a stable uh, viewer base? How do I grow a subscriber base? And I think it's a pretty good question. I myself was asking this question when I started, and I did come up with a couple methods, a couple tricks, which worked pretty well. Um, if you ask any large YouTuber or streamer, they're going to tell you something which is pretty generic. Uh, often they're going to say something like, make content you want to see, you know, high quality stuff that you would watch, and upload on a schedule, which to a degree is fairly correct, but that's not all that's going to work. There's a lot more you need to do. Uh, 2016 is very different from 2011. YouTube has grown a lot, and we have to stop seeing it as so much of a social platform, but more, more as like markets, right? Um, it's more business driven really now, especially since a lot of people are making YouTube channels purely for ad revenue. You, you can see them all over YouTube, uh, and they basically exploit YouTube's algorithms to make ad revenue. But I'm not here to complain about people doing that. I'm here to help you guys grow your YouTube channel in 2016. And in 2016, we have to be a bit smarter with that. So to grow your channel, you really need to take advantage of YouTube's niche markets. So what do I mean by niche markets? Well, for those of you who haven't done grade 10 business, simply put, a niche market is a market that is very small and very specific. Because of this, it's not as competitive as a larger market. There's less people uh, competing, and it's often easier to, you know, start up there. In this case, on YouTube, there are big and small markets. Some big markets are, uh, let's look at games. Big uh, markets would be CSGO, League of Legends, Dota 2. I don't really know about Dota 2, I don't play Dota 2, but I'm going to assume. Uh, these popular games have lots of popular and famous YouTubers making content for it. So that's pretty heavy competition. Uh, if I'm going to make a CSGO video and I have 10 subscribers and I'm supposed to compete with, let's say, b -b 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 Jericho, right? I have to not only make a video at the same quality, but I have to make something that's better, at least to start pulling views. And then, even if I'm making quality uh, videos that are higher quality than his, I have to somehow get recognized and have people go, well, I'll try this guy that no one knows over a popular YouTuber. Now, once we put those guys out of the way, out of they're going to take, let's say, 80% of the views. So the other 20% are going to go to random smaller channels, right? But there's a lot of CSGO YouTubers. A lot of people want to be CSGO YouTubers. It's got a massive player base, and there's a lot of people playing CS and a lot of people making content. So... CS videos are a pretty hard place to start a YouTube channel off of. Now, you can get lucky, but for consistency's sake, it's pretty hard. So, let's take an example of a niche market, though. Critical Ops is a niche market. Why do I say that? Well, initially, when I started making videos for Critical Ops, there were about 45 players in North America. Now, that number grew by the end of, like, the fourth video I made to somewhere in 500, but still, it's not that many. Now there's other there's other regions, so let's say there's a 2,000, 3,000 views that are going to go to Critical Ops every day. Now, that's not a lot, but if there's two YouTubers who people are really watching, and then three or four popular YouTubers, uh, let's say Bnates or iChase, who are also making content, the division of views is actually pretty good. In CSGO, I might be getting one view if I'm lucky, but in Critical Ops, I can pull 50 or 100. And it might not sound like a lot of 10, 50, why does it matter? But for a small channel, that's 5, 10 times the number of views. And it really makes a big impact. So picking a niche market to start a YouTube channel off of is a great way to build a subscriber base because it's far more likely that you're going to be pulling in views. Now, still make good content, but 
it is a lot easier when you're taking advantage of a niche market. So why not just use a niche market for the entire time? Why not make a channel completely centered off of one small topic? Well, it, it is a small market. There's far less people in it and far less people who need it. So it's hard to grow a YouTube channel to 20,000 subscribers off of a small game that only 10,000 people are watching. With a niche market, you hit your subscriber cap pretty quickly. Uh, let's say there's 10,000 people watching Critical Ops. If I keep making Critical Ops content, I'm going to stop at 10,000 subscribers. Whether, no matter how good I make my content, only 10,000 people are going to want to watch it. So that's why it's important to diversify the content on your channel. You want to cover a broad range of topics, of games, of you want to maybe you want to start uh, vlogs or something. But by doing this, you can ensure that your channel spreads out and you gain subscribers from other areas. Let's look at PewDiePie for example. Originally, back in 2010, 2011, 2012, let's say it was oh he's the horror game guy or Happy Wheels, right? Uh, now it's hard to kind of generalize him under one game. That's because he's diversified his content and reached many people. You know, that's why he has such a, well, I think some, most of his subscribers are just kind of subscribing because they want to hit, you know, like a higher number because it's almost like a, we can do it together. But because he's uploading lots of different content, there's something that will appeal to everyone and he can keep that large subscriber base. This is what I did with my channel. Um, I saw that Critical Ops was a niche market and I took advantage of it. Uh, the first time I played the game and I searched up on YouTube, I realized that there was a lot of people watching content, but not, s not trying to be mean to anyone, but the content wasn't like ridiculously high quality and there wasn't a large bulk of it. It was one or two people making the majority of the stuff that people really wanted to watch. And I took advantage of that to grow my channel. My third video uh, is still my most watched video. And that was simply because it was the only video at that point, which kind of covered that type of thing and because it was the only video I got all of the views pretty simple so I hope you all the I wish you all the best and I hope uh, your YouTube channel succeeds if that's what you came here for if you came here for to just hear if you came here to just hear some uh, some interesting thoughts and opinions well then there you go I hope you learn something or if you disagree with me then you can write angry angry comments about how I'm, I'm stupid or something anyway Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this content, uh, let me know. This is Rhubarb Stew. Keep on cooking.